Welcome. Senex Land O'Lakes is pleased to help sponsor this segment in the series of videotapes on feed bunk and ration management produced by Hoffman LaRoche. It is designed to help point out potential problem areas that all feeders face when managing confinement cattle. We hope the information can in some way benefit your operation. Land O'Lakes takes pride in its contributions to the American beef industry. We are dedicated to research and the development of new ways to improve production. We hope the information contained in this Roche series on feed bunk management will contribute to a better understanding of feeding cattle and a more profitable future. Lots of things happen on a feed yard. All of them important to optimizing productivity and getting the most return from every animal that goes through here. You have to buy cattle at the right price. You have to manage their development for optimum efficiency. And you have to develop and use health programs to ensure a quality product that is safe for consumption. Remember, these pens are not here just to confine cattle. They're here to convert feed to beef as efficiently as possible. There is one thing that is the key to everything else, feeding management. Feed bunk management controls what goes in the bunk, how much goes in the bunk, and how it's put in the bunk. Now these things don't always get the attention they should. Sometimes they get taken for granted. In this video, we're going to talk about the principles of feed bunk management. Some of it may seem basic, but it's very important and needs to be looked after continually. Feed yards vary in size, design, and the way things are done. But what you will see here is applicable to all yards, regardless of their size or management style. While some of the details may change, the basics apply everywhere. Let's take a look at the basics of bunk management and see just how important they really are. As you can see here, a multi-year independent research survey shows that digestive and metabolic disorders account for 71% of the deaths in pens. Metabolic disorders are the leading cause of pen death. What are these metabolic disorders? Mainly acidosis, bloat, and sudden death. Please note, we're talking about the animal that dies out in the lot not the hospital pen. You can also see that more than half, 56% of this loss, happens after the animals have been in the pen for more than 80 days. The survey tells us that the problems are associated with what the animals are doing most of the time that they are in the yard at this age and weight, consuming feed. Before we go further, it's important to remember that when these deaths happen, you must get your veterinarian involved. Pen deaths after 80 days should be studied individually. That is, every dead animal should be necropsied to make an accurate determination of the cause of death. Was it due to a metabolic disorder or something else? It is often said that the most valuable animal in the feedlot is the one that just died. It can tell your veterinarian many things. Use what you find out to evaluate what you are doing. Your veterinarian's input is essential. You can profit from it. He can help you develop records, not just on mortality, but on morbidity. Are your starting programs causing problems later? Are nutrient deficiencies showing up as clinical problems? Losses at this time point out just how expensive poor feed bunk management can be. We've got a lot invested in these cattle by this time. Doing things properly is essential because good feed bunk management can mean fewer deaths. And if you do the things that minimize this type of death loss, you'll also be doing things that minimize the minor digestive upsets as well. Likewise, you'll improve feed efficiency, a subject that's not as visually dramatic as death loss, but even more important economically. Feed bunk management really boils down to one main thing. And that is managing the amount of feed offered to the amount of feed consumed. If you can do this, and you can if you work at it, you'll keep them gaining at the optimum rate. 
And just as importantly, you can prevent a whole host of other problems from getting started. Big changes in feed consumption cause digestive upsets. These digestive upsets cause stress, and stress of any kind costs money. Preventing it is especially important because the cattle are already in a stress-inducing situation. They're in a feedlot. You don't have control over all the factors that cause stress, but you do have control over some of them, like managing the animal's feed intake. Proper feed bunk management helps prevent induced stress and the digestive disorders that can come from big changes in feed intake. Feeding cattle correctly takes more than putting feed into them. You've got to do it in a way that controls the digestive process, both in the rumen and lower tract. It's as much art, practical know-how, and attention as it is the science of feeding and nutrition. Any sudden large increase of feed into the rumen will result in changes in the digestive fermentation process. These changes cause a lowering of ruminal pH and, consequently, rumen activity a condition commonly known as lactic acidosis. And conversely, when cattle go off feed, they don't only stop gaining. Changes occur in the rumen that affect them even as they start to come back on feed. Understanding this and taking it into account will help you minimize problems. Maximizing the amount of feed that animals consume without causing problems is the key to success. Your objective is to achieve a small but steady increase in the animal's amount of feed intake throughout the animal's stay in the yard. What you must avoid, and what you'll hear about several times in this discussion, is the roller coaster effect of high feed consumption followed by low feed consumption, then too much again and not enough again, and so forth and so on. Great ups and downs. Here's an actual example of what is meant by the roller coaster effect. And it's an all too common one. As you can see for this particular group of cattle, the desired consumption should range from 25 to 28 pounds as fed, a three pound range. Remember, the absolute amount will vary depending on the type of ration you're feeding, wet, dry, or silage. But the range, in this case 10%, will be about the maximum in any situation. Work out such a range format with your nutritionist or a university extension specialist based on the type of cattle as well as the type of feed. When consumption is plotted on a daily basis, you can easily see what's happening here. Ration levels are increased too quickly, too much, or both. Cattle eat more for a while, and then they fall off rapidly. Why? Because rumen fermentation is changing and now producing more acid. Remember that this is the average for all the cattle in the pen. Each one doesn't eat the same amount every day. If the pen is at a 26 pound average, some cattle may eat 32 pounds, while some eat 15 pounds. Feed consumption goes way down and then starts to come back up. It increases steadily, but then gets to the point where you can expect it to fall off again, and it does. This happens time and time again throughout the history of these cattle in the pen. This can lead to reduced overall feed consumption, resulting in lower daily gain, poor feed efficiency, metabolic disorders, and possible death. The feed caller must learn how to recognize this pattern and control it. Let's start at the beginning and talk about the building blocks of good feed bunk management, things you need to consider before you formulate your ration. Now, they follow a logical order. Most of us are familiar with them. Let's talk about feed calling, feed delivery to the bunk, feed bunk condition, bunk space. In following segments, we'll talk about management as it relates to the ration, starting cattle, and dealing with metabolic disorders. All these are important parts of total feedlot management. We can't pick out one or two and do a particularly good job of them and then neglect the others, even the ones we think aren't quite so important. If we do, the expense, hard work, and value of our efforts will be reduced. Let's start with feed calling. 
The feed caller is one of the keys to success in feed bunk management and ultimately in the success of the feed yard. The feed caller is the key to managing the amount of feed offered to the amount consumed. In many situations, he's the only person who sees firsthand what's happening in the pen and in the feed bunk day in and day out. He must know what's going on in the pen and he needs accurate information because he's the one who's responsible for striking the proper balance between what's offered and what's consumed. Feed decisions must be made constantly. Rule number one, when you adjust the ration amount, make adjustments in small increments. Do not make drastic changes in the amount of feed you put in the bunk on a day-to-day -day basis. If you ever have to make a large change, you know that something's wrong, or that the feed caller hasn't been paying attention to what's going on on a daily basis. Look for a minimum amount remaining in the bunk. Be sure not to overcompensate. Don't overreact if there's too much left in the bunk or if there's an empty bunk. In either case, if what you see is not what you expect, consider that the right amount of feed might not have been put in the bunk to start with. Let's use a pen of 100 head as an example. If 2,500 pounds was called for and someone put in 2,800 pounds, you'll most likely see more feed than you want to see remaining. Here's where one mistake can lead to another. If you correct what you believe is a drop in consumption by severely cutting the amount from the next feeding, you'll be drastically underfeeding the cattle on the next go-round. If you continue with that amount, soon the bunk will become slick, justifying an increase, and all of a sudden, you'll be back where you started. This is a quick way to get into that roller coaster effect we talked about earlier, something you don't want to do. If the cattle are still hungry, we may go up some more creating the cycle. So whenever you see a big discrepancy, check to make sure that the bunk started out with the right amount. Also, take a look at other factors, especially environmental ones. Was it unusually hot or cold that day? Was there a storm? Now these things can affect feed consumption. If they're temporary, they pass. We want to take that into consideration before we make any drastic changes in the feeding routine. Always be looking to the average amount consumed. Ask yourself, how far from the average or established range is the pen? An empty bunk does not necessarily mean that the cattle are hungry. If the bunk is empty and the cattle are in the pen lying down, you're probably right on with your amount. In any case, you certainly wouldn't want to make any big change if you saw that. Probably no change on the first day at least. On the other hand, if you see a slick bunk and aggressive cattle milling around the bunk with their heads down in it, then you know that you've got to adjust the amount of feed. But even in this case, you've got to look at all the other factors in the feed yard and make small incremental changes. An important part of good bunk management is keeping track of what's going on in each pen. Use a written feeding log. This log should contain accurate data about each pen, including an up-to-date head count, yesterday's bunk reading, what did they eat, how much was called for, how much was delivered, how much was left. You also need to have a minimum of a five-day consumption average and the maximum feed increase allowed for a particular ration in each pen. This log is essential because trusting it to memory will cause mistakes. Also, a written record means that no matter who's looking at a pen on a particular day, they'll be able to get a good picture of what's going on and make the right decisions. The minimum five-day consumption average is a very important feed bunk management tool. Looking at this average will tell you what happened when the feed was increased. Did it stay up or did it come back down after two or three days? For example, if we were at 23 pounds, and we went to 26, then to 28, and then dropped back down to 23 and saw this pattern repeat itself, we'd know that once we got to 26 pounds, a smaller increase would be necessary, say one pound or less. Having this information recorded and, and using it will reduce the amount of trial and error that goes into adjusting the feed in each pen. This in turn, 
will help the feed increases keep going up at a nice steady rate, avoiding the up and down roller coaster effect. If you do not currently do so, graph the consumption of several of your pens. It's a good idea, and you might be surprised at what you see. Once you've figured out how much feed to put in the bunk, you've got to get it to the bunk. Sounds simple enough, but there are some things that you need to pay attention to. When delivering feed, remember, drive slowly. Feed yard safety is everybody's responsibility, and we do want to keep the dust down. Dust adds to respiratory disease problems. Here's another thing that you need to pay attention to before you get to the feed bunk. Be sure to allow for a proper mixing time. Remember, the time it takes to get to the first bunk is not necessarily the time it takes to properly mix the feed. When you get to the bunk, use the entire bunk when putting the feed in. Don't start 10 feet from the end, and don't stop 20 feet from the other end. Have uniform distribution throughout the bunk. Don't have a big pile here and a little bit there and a big pile here and a little bit there. Well, this isn't nearly as bad as having large areas of the bunk empty. It probably means that not all animals will be offered the same amount of feed. Remember why this is important. Cattle stake out a particular area of a bunk. Most often, you'll see the same animal at the same place at the bunk each time they're eating. They may move a little bit one way or the other, but normally they don't move very much. This means that if an animal happens to be in an area of the bunk that doesn't get feed at the given time, it is probably not going to consume consistently that time around. And if this spot happens to be one that routinely gets overlooked for one reason or another, the animals in those spots are going to be way out of sync with the other animals in regard to feed intake and gain and efficiency. It's important, vitally important, that the proper amount of feed is delivered into the bunk. The obvious reason is that a certain amount has been called for. But there's another important reason that we talked about earlier. If an incorrect amount of feed, that is, one that is different from what is called for, is put into the bunk, it's impossible to judge the intake of the animals. If too little is delivered, we're going to have a slick bunk. And it's possible we may start upward adjustments of feed amounts before the cattle consumption actually justifies an increase. On the other hand, as we demonstrated earlier, if we put in too much, it's going to look like the animals are not consuming the feed. So the normal thing to do would be to adjust downward. So once again, we've gone from more feed than is called for one day to a big reduction the next day, causing more confusion, further adjustments in the amount of feed, and all of a sudden we're right back on that roller coaster that we've tried so hard to avoid. The roller coaster that decreases your feed efficiency and your daily gains can also lead to metabolic disorders and a possible death. Standardized feeding practices are essential to optimum feedlot closeouts. In addition to taking care of getting the feed into the bunk, pay attention to the condition of the feed bunk. Keep the bunks clean. Remove any manure, silage trash, or spoiled feed continuously. Don't make this a once a week job. It needs to be done continuously, all the time. Develop a schedule so that all bunks are cleaned routinely. Then, also clean as needed to remove spoilage, manure, and moisture. Whatever you do, don't wait around for the animals to get hungry enough to clean it out. Well, it happens. You've probably heard, well, I'll just make them eat those silage cobs. And when they get hungry enough, they probably will. But why do that? You're just forcing intake of an inferior ration that really isn't doing much, if any good. Days are wasted in the feedlot by doing this, and those days cost money. When checking the feed bunks, watch the corners and cracks for feed buildup. Make sure to get any mold out. Make sure that the animals have easy access to the bunk. You know, they shouldn't have to walk through knee-deep mud to get there. Mud is one of the biggest profit robbers in feeding pens. Studies show this again and again. There shouldn't be any big holes or ditches to walk through or stand in as they're eating either. Make it easy for them to get to where they're going to eat. 
After all, that is what they're here for, to make money by converting feed into beef. Check the position of the neck rail. Make sure that it's the right height for the type of animal in the pen. If it's too low, big cattle will have difficulty reaching the feed or have to eat with their necks over the rail. If it's too high, other problems will arise because animals will get out of the pen or calves will get in the bunk. In either case, it's not conducive to getting the cattle to eat the proper amount. Bunk space, how much is enough? There's no single answer to that question, although it's an important one. First of all, the amount of bunk space needed depends upon the size of the cattle. Bigger cattle need more bunk space. That's the most obvious point. But it also depends on other things. It depends on the type of ration. Higher energy rations are going to require less bunk space than rations that contain more roughage. It also depends on feeding frequency. Once a day feeding will require more bunk space than feeding two or three times a day. So there's no single answer. There's a range, generally from nine to 15 inches for yearlings. Now likewise, most feed yards allow more bunk space and total pen space during the months with the most severe weather. The type of ration you're feeding, the time of year, and your management practices dictate how much bunk space you'll need. Now, you may need a foot for once a day feeding and nine inches with twice a day feeding. Bunk space needs to be adjusted. Like everything else in the feed yard, when you change one thing, you most likely have to change something else. And bunk spacing is a good example. Remember, it's impossible to talk about proper feed intake without addressing the need for good, clean water. Clean the tanks thoroughly and routinely. Develop a schedule. These are some basic but very important things to think about and to pay attention to to get the most from the ration you are feeding. Much of what we've just talked about is the responsibility of the feed caller. This person is often the key to the success of a good feed bunk management program. And he needs to take this responsibility seriously. It's the feed caller's responsibility to decide on the amount to be fed. And of course, in order to make those decisions correctly, he has to get accurate information. Everyone who works the pens needs to help make sure they're run right. They need to check the bunk condition and take corrective measures. They need to look at the overall condition of the pen and again, either take corrective measures or make sure that the right people know about it. It's an important job and it needs to be done with a serious attention to detail. Whether it's being done in a large commercial feedlot operation or in a farmer feeder operation by one person. The only difference is the number of animals. The importance of the job doesn't change. These management tips reflect Hoffman LaRoche's commitment to help you get more from every day your cattle are on feed, from every pound of feed, Hoffman LaRoche is the maker of Bovitec, the versatile, safe, palatable ionophore that improves both daily gain and feed efficiency. It gives you more from every dollar that you invest in cattle on feed. Bovitec, part of the best in feed bunk management.